Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. This is my Honda CRF450L, and I can't believe it's May already. And I'm saying that because every year uh, in May, myself and a couple of my closest friends go out and do a bunch of riding in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. This is a dirt bike, but it's a street legal dirt bike. It's got a license plate on it, has everything that's required. It's got a mirror, speedometer, um, you know, turn signals and, uh, and lights, so you can ride it on the street. And that's important because there's a whole ton of trails out there, legal trails to ride out on, um, but a lot of them you've got to take the streets to get to. Uh, so it's important that you've got, you know, an actual street legal dirt bike. Um, it's also important to know how to get there. And that's where this guy comes into. This is a Garmin GPS. It's a Garmin Montana. And years ago, I picked this up and I sought to try and figure out how I could get this thing mounted to the bike. And you guessed it, that's today's 3D print. So the first piece of the puzzle is this piece here. This is not actually a 3D print. This is a cradle that uh, Garmin sells that the Montana GPS uh, sits in, and it also charges it and powers it uh, as well. And there's a release for that right here. And you can block this release from functioning by tightening in this Torx head screw here. And I've got the bit on my keychain. So if I'm gonna go into a restaurant to eat or you know a convenience store while I'm getting some gas to get water or something, um, I can tighten this guy down and not worry about somebody just coming and grabbing this off the bike. Well, let's see if I can do this with one hand. If I push this, it's going to release the GPS. Yeah, there we go. So with the GPS off, you can see we've got four machine screws here that are holding that, uh, that cradle from Garmin down onto something. Well, onto what? There was a number of different design challenges to get this onto this bike. Uh, we don't have any good surface here immediately apparent to mount to. We've got this stabilizer bar running across here, but it's not even as thick as my index finger. It's not gonna give us a firm, uh, you know, a firm surface to clamp onto. Anything that we try and clamp directly to that is just gonna rotate on the bar. Um, and we don't wanna be really any higher than this either because you can see here, if we look across the bar, um, we're already fairly high here. Not too high for it to be usable or be in the way, but any higher, and we do risk it being in the way because this is a dirt bike. It's not a street bike that you're just cruising around on. Um, you know, the bike is moving underneath you when you're on single track trails quite a bit. Um, you know, and oftentimes you're leaning way forward on the bike, so you don't want to hit this and be knocking it off. Now down beneath it, we have these risers here that also clamp the bar. This is two different pieces. You have an aluminum piece here and an aluminum piece down here. And these bolts at the top uh, squeeze that bar inside these clamps. So basically I had this distance from the, the top of this riser to the bottom of this bar to work with. And this is what I came up with. This is, a, this is TPU, so it's a flexible piece, um, incredibly durable and strong. And underneath of it is some pieces of thin aluminum that I fabricated that bridge the bottom of this arch and flat piece on the bottom of the TPU over here. And then this acts as essentially like a washer underneath these bolts. And this is only, I don't know, maybe one and a half millimeters thick. So uh, maybe two, I'll measure that and let you guys know. Uh, so there was still plenty of thread on these bolts uh, that I wasn't concerned about, you know, not having enough thread to get good grip uh, on these clamps here. Here's what it looks like from the side and the back. And the other important thing to note here is there's a very specific angle with this. This does not sit going straight up. It doesn't come straight back. Um, it's sitting at a very, very specific angle, uh, at least for my height. When I am sitting on the seat, in the normal riding position, uh, the angle of the screen is the perfect viewing angle for my eyes. Now that we've kind of walked through the basics of how it looks on the bike, it's probably easier to show you the individual pieces over on the bench. If you noticed around the front of this, I actually have uh, in the print here, it says uh, PYR8 Moto, Pirate Moto. Um, that's a website of mine. Uh, when I initially designed this and posted it on one of my other channels, I did make these available for sale, and I've sold a few of them. And I gotta tell you, it got tiring really quick uh, cutting these aluminum pieces down here at the bottom that I designed uh, with a drill press and a bandsaw. I actually drew a DXF for this and sent this off to a service and had a number of these cut, and I'll share that with you as well because that was a huge lifesaver um, as I started to get some orders come in for this guy. So. Let's go over to the bench. Let's look at the pieces that actually make this guy up and I'll talk you through the rest of it. While I was bringing everything over to the bench, the mailman came and dropped this off. And uh, I wanna share this with you guys because while what's in this box is not a 3D printed product, uh, it is, the product itself I believe is in a 3D printed tray that makes up part of 
I guess you could say it's part of the product. This is from uh, Spencer Webb over at uh, Kinetic Precision. And uh, he grinds uh, precision flat stones that are designed for maintaining um, precision machine surfaces. So this should be a set of his stones. He's got his own YouTube channel. Um, I watched some of his stuff. I decided that, that uh, he was the way I wanted to go on these. Uh, so let's see what we got. BFG stones made in USA. I think he, I think he grinds these. Kind of looks like he grinds these in his uh, garage, which I can certainly connect with. Well, Spencer, I don't think anyone's going to say that uh, you don't use enough of this saran wrap stuff, though. I'll admit, it's doing a good job holding everything together. I just don't want to damage what's inside here. All right, there we go, I think. And, yep, this is this tray for the stones is 3D printed. And it looks like it's laser engraved, too. Uh, that actually looks really cool. Huh, I've never seen laser engraving on a 3D print before. I feel like I need a laser engraver now. All right, so what are these? These are, these start out as regular, there's more stickers in here. So these start out as just regular uh, stones that he grinds on, I think, four sides, if I remember from the website. So... Uh, they go through a precision grinding process on this face, this face, this face, and this face. Oh, he's got the, wow, that's laser engraved too. So the way these work is you take two of the matching surfaces and you rub them together to maintain the stones. And then because this is precision ground flat and doesn't have any high spots sticking up, you can then use this on a precision metal surface uh, to maintain it. So like if you get like a nick or something in your surface, here, let's go over to my mill, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the table on my milling machine and this has been precision ground flat. And it's really important that this guy stays flat so the things that we machine using this as a reference surface are square. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video, probably not, but there is a, a small nick in the table right here. And it's my fault, I did something really stupid I had this uh, magnetic indicator base, and normally the way that you would use this is you would set it down on the table very carefully, uh, and then turn this and it engages a magnet, and this guy stays in place. Well, somehow uh, I picked it up and I engaged the magnet uh, before setting it down to the table, and you can imagine what happened. I got it close to the table and the magnet sucked it down really hard into the table, and one of the, uh, the corners here uh, on this guy uh, nicked up my table. So what we should be able to do now with these stones is, and again, I'm going to take, I'm going to pick up one of the stones and you start by maintaining the surfaces of the stones together like this. You have to use them in pairs. And then we take this over to the table. And if this works, it shouldn't scratch up any of the surface of my table here, but should remove this nick. Oh, I can feel that cutting on that raised spot. Yep, and I can feel the change in the way the stone's moving over that. And yep. So, you know, it didn't magically make it go away. What it did is it removed the, uh, the high spot. You know, when you when you, you nick a table like this, you create like a dent, and then some of that material that was inside that dent is forced up above the surface of the table. And what it's done is knocked off that material that was forced up higher than the surface of the table. So now when I try and use this table as a reference point again, if I set something down on this, like my vise, or uh, maybe I have a V-block that has a precision surface on the bottom, uh, it's not sitting at a slight angle because it's sitting up on that divot. So. Uh, these are great. Again, not a sponsor. Uh, I ordered these with my own actual money from uh, Spencer over at Kinetic Precision. And um, so far, I would, uh, I would recommend those. They seem very nice. All right, so back to this build. So uh, I actually found this is my original prototype uh, for this build. This is not TPU. I was prototyping it in PLA. 
And these are also the, the pieces, the first ones that I cut uh, just on the drill press and on a, uh, a bandsaw uh, for the brackets at the bottom. Now, I did design these and 3D print uh, test prototype. This is also in PLA and this is, it's not stiff enough to actually use in production. Um, even if it was strong enough, I wouldn't trust this PLA to not deform underneath those bolts that clamp down on the handlebars. Uh, but I was able to use this in design, um, you know, to make sure that I was going to have the right fit on the, the screw holes on the bottom of the 3D printed part and then the, uh, the, the holes on those brackets that mount the, uh, the handlebars down. Um, and then I just took this and I just set this down on a piece of aluminum sheet. I traced it, cut out the aluminum sheet, set this back down on it, marked the centers of these holes uh, to drill, I drilled those holes out. Um, and those are the pieces that you see down here. This should basically be, you know, a perfect fit, an analog for our aluminum pieces. I mean, I guess not perfect, right? Because, um, you know, I think I wavered a bit in a couple spots with the bandsaw and then brought them in close with a file, uh, but they're pretty close. And I made this available for sale on my site, uh, piratemoto.com, sold a handful of them. And then I think in one week I got two orders and I dreaded making these things. These took like an hour and a half, <laughs> I think, to, to make because, of course, I wanted to get them perfect since it was something I was making available for sale. And I said, that's enough. And I redrew this, uh, I think, in Fusion 360 so I could get a DXF. And then I reached out to a service called Send Cut Send. And some of you guys might already be familiar with them and had a bunch cut. And they're perfect. It's exactly a match to my drawing, uh, which you'd expect from you know a service that specializes in that. But what was even more impressive is, and this was a couple years ago. I don't know what their pricing is today, but I want to say everything that you're looking at here, plus you know half a dozen that I've already sold, I think was like 25 bucks. So if you need more than one of something like this to go along with your project that is not going to be a 3D printed part, definitely check these guys out. Not a sponsor of the video, uh, but send, cut, send. I think I've used them twice, been really happy with the results both times. And again, for, you, you can't beat it for the money. There's no way that I would be willing to take the time to fabricate these parts myself for what it costs to have them do it. So I saw that in comparison to the, the original prototype part, there's a couple of the differences here. The original one, I just had self-tapping screws go right down into the PLA. I actually use this, by the way. When I say prototype, I actually think I ran this for a full year uh, just to see if there was anything I wanted to change. You could see the dirt on here, actually, that was trapped between the bar and this piece. And the self-tapping screws held up in this PLA just fine. And uh, you could see the aluminum held up fine. Uh, where this mounts. This one's a little loose. I don't know if those screws backed off or if I maybe had this piece off for testing at some point. Uh, but when it came time to make some adjustments to the design, uh, I switched to TPU because this material is basically indestructible. I mean, the, the PLA was okay, but I do feel like eventually uh, these screw holes would have worked loose. Uh, and this piece probably would have broken if it was under a lot of stress, like a twisting stress. Like let's say maybe I fell forward onto this like this piece I could see breaking off in a layer line down here. By switching to TPU, it is basically indestructible. I don't think every part of this piece is thick enough that I don't think I could pull it apart or even get it apart with any type of tool unless that was a cutting tool with an edge on it. I also switched, switched out to uh, brass inserts so that I could use machine screws uh, for that cradle that mounts down onto here. And these are just inserted with, uh, with heat. I have, along with these inserts, came the, uh, the piece that adapts the end of your soldering iron uh, to heat these guys up and press them down into place. Uh, it is a little bit tricky. I have scrapped one of these. Uh, I think I've done five or six now with the brass inserts. And out of the five or six, one, I did just get off too much of an angle. I don't know, pushing down the insert, and I wasn't happy with it, and it went into the bin. Um, but with a little bit of practice, these inserts are pretty easy to use and do give you uh, a better grip than a self-tapping screw would and give you the ability to, to use a machine screw that you can reuse. So, you know, even if I was taking this on and off, on and off every single day, these inserts are going to hold up way, way better than a self-tapping screw in either PLA or TPU. I will share the STL for this. 
uh, even though I do have these available for sale. I'm going to share the STL with you guys. You know, there was a comment on a video a couple weeks ago. A guy, I, I had said, hey, share the STL for that. He, he had talked about a design that, that he had made uh, that was similar to something that I had done or solved a similar problem. And I said, oh, you know, do you have a design you can share? And he said, no, he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to see it turn up on eBay for five bucks. And I can totally understand that. I mean, I've had the same concern sharing all my STLs uh, for these videos like this, for example, I designed this, I did a video on my net magi channel a couple years ago, I've sold, you know, probably half a dozen of these. And you know, now we're making a video about it today. And I'm going to give the STL away for free. Uh, now the license on that STL gives you the user permission to download it, print one for your own use, it doesn't give you uh, the user permission to take the STL print these up and sell them on eBay or Amazon or Etsy or, you know, whatever else. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm asking that you guys respect that. And I think everyone watching this video probably will. Uh, but, you know, I don't, ultimately, I don't have control over that. And I guess it's up to me whether if I see one of these things come up for sale uh, someplace, whether I want to, you know, take any legal action against it. Uh, but it's a risk that we all take when we share our designs. I'm curious to hear down in the comments what you guys Think of that. Do you, are there designs that you don't share because you're afraid that even if the license specifically says non-commercial use, uh, that someone's going to take it and sell it? Let me know down in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. I wasn't surprised to hear that that person didn't want to share their design, but I ultimately reached the decision that it was worth it to just share the designs with you guys. So the STL for this will be in the description and I will even include uh, the DXF. Uh, for these pieces here if you want to have uh, if you want to have a set of these laser cut or you want to print them probably if you just need one set it makes sense to just print it in PLA like I did trace it onto aluminum and cut it and let me grab my calipers I'll tell you how thick these guys are so these are yes yeah, this two millimeter stock two millimeter aluminum stock uh, you could probably get by with something a little bit thinner I wouldn't go with anything thicker because remember, this is going underneath that bolt that clamps the handlebars. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's plenty of thread there, but I wouldn't push it and go with like a much thicker piece. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop this week, taking a look at this design. Uh, I realize that there's probably not, you know, too much of my audience out there that happens to, you know, have the same bike and want to get a GPS onto it. But even if you don't, hopefully, you know, something we covered today, you know, inspires you to, uh, to get out there and print something and just make something that you've got better or, you know, print something that uh, lets you adapt um, something onto something else that you'd like to, uh, to work together. And if you're into motorcycling, um, I've got a couple other videos actually uh, on this bike. I did, let's see, there's one for the, the plate inside my luggage bag on the back uh, that enables me to quickly get it on and off and you know, I have a wash plug that I did for that bike uh, as well. I might have to do that in an upcoming video or maybe just like a not Friday. It's not like a super complex one. I feel like there's another one that I missed as well. I'll dig it up and I'll put those down in the description as well. Guys, thanks. And if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. If you really liked it and you want to see me next Friday, hit that subscribe button. And if you do, I'll see you next Friday. balance.